What a town. Never been in so many night spots in my life, and at that, you didn't make all of them. Oh. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> Look, you slept on the bride side of the bed. Does Mama love Papa? <laughs> oh, what time is it? Oh, it's two o'clock. We didn't hit the hay till after daybreak. You want some breakfast? I couldn't get food past my tonsils. Neither could I. We need a couple of pick-me-ups. Hey, give me the bar. Yeah, the bar. Hello, is this the bar? Hey, shut off that sun, will you? What are you trying to do, blind me? Oh, wait a minute, I wasn't talking to you. Better send up a couple of pick-me-ups. Yeah, make it two sidecars, 410. The bridal suite. Well, did you sleep well? No, I had nightmares. Did you? So did I. Kept dreaming about Pirelli and the mob and what happened after a repeal when Pirelli turned tough and started blowing up laundries and machine gunning trucks that wouldn't kick in. Yeah, snatching kids too. Nothing doing on that line for me. I couldn't go for that. No, I didn't mind running the booze. That was kind of fun, but killing's a little out of my line. Yeah, we're just a couple of quick puffs. Hey, forget it. Me for a bath. You had one yesterday. What's that? Bonjour, monsieur, bonjour. The bridal suite, eh? Sure. I thought monsieur madame had to spend a satisfactory night. Yeah, everything was just dandy. Yeah. Keep the change. Oh, monsieur, merci, right. monsieur. Right. Merci, right. monsieur. Right. Merci, monsieur. Some clerk thinks we're a honeymoon couple. <laughs> ah, had a tradition of the Herald. Uh-uh. Looks like we skipped the big town just in time. A gigantic police net has drawn in all the known gangster elements. And... Uh, Take a look at that. A long trip, huh? Charlie must have followed us over here. Oh, you're crazy. This is a swell place for a hideout. Nightclubs, racetracks, gals. Yeah, just the kind of place where Pirelli would look for us. I tell you, we've seen the last of that guy. All we've got to do is to stay here till the heat's cooled off, then go back. Dip into our safe deposit boxes and live like a couple of kings. Cheer up, I tell you, we're sitting pretty. Pirelli, machine guns, they got us. Machine guns. Dumbbell. Well, I'll go on. You thought the same thing I did. I did nothing of the sort. I knew what it was all the time. Say, will you put that thing away? You want to land us both in the cooler? I need a drink. Yeah? Well, here's a little memory from last night. You know, I thought sure that was Pirelli. Remember how he used to carry the pea shooter in a violin case? Just a bundle of nerves. Hey, what are you doing? Stop! You want to find someone? Go show! Aya! Say, will you quit that fool habit? You're going to get us both into trouble. Oh, I can't help it. I've been doing it ever since I was a baby. Do you think I want to break my luck now? Come on. Let's get into our glad rags and see what's doing on the boulevard. Hey, you mean the new outfits with the stovepipe lids and everything? Certainly. Good in Paris. Let's be Paris here. We. Oui. See what I see? And how? Hey, 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 you can't do that. Here they're ladies. Right out of your class. Yeah, <laughs> but in mine. Monsieur? Americans. Well, the one who bowed to us looks like an Englishman. Oh, dear, where is that husband of mine? Why don't you form the officers' club and see if he's left there? I think I will. Bring us a couple of slugs of hooch. Pardon, monsieur? Hooch, booze, you dumb cluck, a snifter. And no cut stuff, get me? Trot out something that packs a kick. Kick? No, oh, he can't understand a word of English. Okay, I'll slip it to him in French. Uh, Billy Boo bringing me cognac foot sweet. Ah, cognac, monsieur, cognac. Sure, cognac, bring a bottle. Boy, there ain't nothing like having an education. 
Dan, I got him again. Take it off me. Take it off me. <laughs> ah, take it easy. Take it easy. I think this belongs to the lady. Pardon me, miss, but is this your Airedale? Why, why, yes, thank you, monsieur. <laughs> he followed my friend. Anguish. <laughs> my name's Dan Linton. Oh, is it? Well, Mr. Linton, my sister, Madame Roulette. How do you do? Glad to meet you, Madame Roulette. <laughs> of course not, Mr. Linton. Meet my sister, Yvonne Cartier. Tickled to death. What's the matter, you tired? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Linton, but we're expecting my sister's husband. Hmm, I'm sorry, too. Say, hey, can't you get rid of him? Of course not. I wouldn't think of it. He's an officer in the army and an excellent shot. Uh-oh. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> I hope. What's the matter? No sale? No. One of them is married. Which one? The one you like. Okay. I'll take the other one. Hey, waiter. No. Oh, my dears, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right, Henri. I've had new orders. I must leave for Morocco at once. To City Bellabeth? Yes, and I'm leaving tonight. You can join me later, dear. Oh, Henri, just as we were having such a wonderful holiday. Well, it can't be helped. Shake out Bill Benabou is making trouble again. But, dear, didn't you capture him? I thought he was in prison. Well, so did I, but he escaped, and now there's the devil to pay. <laughs> to the bad luck of Pirelli. <laughs> well, of all the... Who threw that bottle at me? Do you realize you nearly hit me with that bottle? Well, a guy can't make a bullseye every time. Listen, waiter, get us another bottle of that cognac. You fool, I'm not a waiter. And you be more careful. Oui, monsieur. Another bottle of cognac. Yeah, and a bottle of champagne for a chaser. Oui, monsieur. Don't mind the Henri. It was only an accident. Yvonne, why don't you come with me when I go to join Henri? To City Bellabiz. The desert has no attractions for me, my dear. But it's not all desert. Why, of course it isn't. You've never seen such a variety of scenery. Mountain, desert, beautiful oases, shaded spots of peace and quiet, and prickly heat and sand fleas. Oh, no. That is, not very often. Hey, take it easy with that thing, will you? All right. Great <laughs> comes! Now, look what you've done. I've had enough of this. Are you men looking for trouble? No, of course not. Please excuse my friend. Sure, I didn't mean no harm. First, you almost hit me with a bottle, and... But I and can't help throwing bottles. It's a habit of his. I guess I was born with it. And then you soaked the back of my, my head with champagne. Well, that's better than beer. <laughs> At least I ain't no cheapskate. You clumsy idiot. Oh, please, Henri, it was nothing, really. Nothing? Oh, of course it was something. No one wants champagne in the back of their neck. <laughs> that's right. Listen, I'll buy the wine and we'll put it where it belongs. That isn't necessary. Oh, don't get sore. We're good sports. Forget it, Henri. You see, we've met Mr. Linton and his friend, uh... Mr. Carnover. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Linton did me a service. Oh, that was nothing. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was nothing. <laughs> this is our first trip abroad, and we're only too glad to meet someone who can tell us where to go. Where do you want to go? I'll tell them where to go. <laughs> we don't want to go there. We want to go someplace where nobody can find us. We're hot, lady, smoking hot. He means we're all burned out. You know, the excitement of big business. <laughs> oh, you Americans live at such a breathless pace. That's just what's the matter with us. We're out of breath. You should be. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> what we need now is peace and quiet. And I know just where you can find it. Where? Morocco. It's in the North African desert. A desert? Oh, but such a desert. You've never seen such a variety of scenery. You've never seen such beautiful oases. Shaded spots where anyone can find peace and quiet. Huh. Sounds swell. How do we get there? You simply join the Foreign Legion. But ain't that a regiment? No, it's an army. Oh, we don't want to fight. We're fed up on fighting at bullets. <laughs> we can get plenty of that where we come from. Pirelli, shall I give it to him? Not here, quick scrap. Sorry, ladies, we've got an appointment. Big businessmen. Why, they're just American gangsters. We like to join the Legion. <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at, Lord? We mean it. It's the five years. No, oh, no, no. A couple of months is good enough for us. The period of enlistment is the five years or nothing. But after recruits is leaving on the full train tonight. So make up your mind. Oh. 
child like pull the cart for the gentleman? Oh, the gentleman's pull their own cork. Now, they keep things moving like this, and there's plenty more when I do that in here. Dan, look who's here. Whoa! <laughs> this is a surprise. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You uh, know other seat? And this is the only one left, sir. Have one on us, pal. Wait till you hear what we went and done. <laughs> oh, leave him alone. Can't you see he's giving us the rip? Oh, but I can't help telling him. You remember what that dame advised us, the one that was with you? <laughs> well, we took it up. We joined the Legion. Can you tie that? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, sure. We got railroad passes and everything. Third class, but we fixed that. We ride push to nothing. And you, did you also join? <laughs> yeah, but I'm in two. Five years. The rank and file of the Legion is forbidden to travel first class. It is an irrevocable rule. We will leave this coach immediately. And who are you to be telling us what to do? I happen to be Captain Rilletta of the 4th Regiment of the Legion. <laughs> and I'm Haley Selassie. How are you doing? <laughs> you realize I'm giving you an order? Order my eye. You've got an officer. Where's your uniform? You look more like a ribbon clerk to me. Who <laughs> 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 will you get out of here? We will not get out of here. We are paying for this dinner. We're going to stay here and eat it. You'll force me to order you under arrest. In a minute, you'll get forced out on your ear. Why, you? <laughs> Lupus, sir, stop it. Right These men have no right to be in this car. I demand that they be ejected. Say, we showed you our first class tickets, didn't we? Right. Oh, oh, I know they have plenty of money. No doubt they bribed you. But, monsieur. but they must leave this car at once. Either control you or tell Monsieur you shall leave the car. Now, there's an idea. Yes, we came here to eat our dinner in peace and quiet. Stop. Stop. Scum one meets while traveling. No theory. Can you imagine him trying to order us around? What a chance. <laughs> That means four days in the cooler with lots of pay. That's no loss. Shut up, you. I know your kind. I've read about you American criminals, gangsters, Apaches, crooks. Well, make up your mind. So you'd strike me, huh? The sort you... Riot once. Baboon face. Baboon face? Well, a, well, a wrong nerve. Silence! Attention! Watch for the quartermaster, sir. Get your issue of uniform. Right! Like the engineers, anyway. Holy suffering catfish, look who's coming. Sergeant Goldner. Captain. Get Private Clinton and Conover. Yes, sir. Private Clinton and Conover. Step forward. Two soldiers of the Legion. Thank you. Two terrible specimens, Captain. You recognize in me the ribbon clerk whom you had thrown out of the restaurant car? Oh, gee, Cappy, we was only fooling. Can't take a joke. Yes, I'm taking two jokes. Sergeant Grobner. During that period of training, these men are to be considered under arrest. You will give them double drills and heavy duties that will set some of the fat off them and the insufferable assurance out of what passes for their brains. Instill in them the knowledge that in the Legion, discipline and obedience to officers is paramount. It shall be done, Captain. What's all the shooting about? Machine gun practice. Take off those masks. What's the idea of wearing gas masks for this work? 
Well, this is poison gas detail, ain't it? Smell of that thing is strong enough to curl your hair. You spend months training us for war, then put us to work skinning onions. The Foreign Legion must eat tons of these things. Yeah, no wonder the Arabs can't stand up to them. Never mind that. You drive a car, Linton, don't you? Sure, but we've got passes to go to... Your passes are cancelled. Huh? Cancelled? Why, we ain't been outside these walls in months. Be quiet, you! You men are to take a staff car. Meet Captain Willett and his family at the railway station. Pick up their baggage and drive them to their hotel. Step into it! Yes, sir. Carry a baggage. Now we're a couple of red caps. Say, there's a cafe back there. How about buying a little drink? <laughs> you know I don't drink. TV? What are you doing with a dead dog? No dog TV. God still walking time. We're parked near a hydrant. <laughs> Look at that. Ain't she beautiful? Ain't she gorgeous? Hey, hold on there. Hey, let me go. Do you realize this is the first white woman I've seen in months? We can't run in there and grab her. But we'll build up to that as we go along. Yeah, take it easy. Take it easy. Let's handle this with a little finesse. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Ollie. You've got the timing all wrong. It goes like this. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, you mean stop time. That's right. Boy, that is something. How's that? That's well. Just a minute, boys. Here, do you get that spike? She's American. Of course I am. So are we. From New York. New York? <laughs> I'm Dan Linton. And I'm Spike Conover. And I'm Honey Evans. I say you're a honey. Be a pal. Scram, will you? Scram yourself. Say, what are you doing in the city, Bella Bears? Dancing in the cafe. I just came on from a season in Paris. What are you two doing in the Legion? Oh, we're taking the rest cure. Rest cure? Sure. Let's sit down and take a little drink. I'll tell you all about it. You tell her all about it. Say, whose party is this? It's my party, of course. This is all home week for me. Give us a couple of bottles of wine. Yeah, the best in the house. You must be kind of lonesome here, honey. But you won't be from now on, honey. <laughs> I know Sergeant Grosvenor. Grosvenor? That's such a push. Sure, he comes here all the time. Why, don't you like him? Like him? No. Huh. Listen, that guy was raised on poison ivy. But me, I was raised on condensed milk. <laughs> Look here, how about you and me getting together sometime? Oh, yeah? Well, what'll I be doing while you two get together? Don't forget, I saw her first. That just gives you a nuisance value. You can't take a chance with that guy, honey. He's dynamite. I think you're both dynamite. Just a couple of Broadway wolves on the prowl. Well, which one of us gets the date? Both of you. Together. I'll be a lot safer with two wolves. Uh, yes, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Up here. Why, there's the stop car now. Excuse me. Get down to the left. The man who imprisoned me, Marrakesh. If he only knew he was so close to shake up Dulbarabu himself. Where are the men who drove that car? Down on the highway. To the bad luck of Grosvenor. Huh? Don't do that. You'll get thrown out on your neck. I warned you once, you can't smash bottles in this cafe. I can smash anything I pay for. I paid for this one, didn't I? Of course, but uh, then here goes. I'll call the military police. Oh, you will, will you? Attention. Clinton, you were ordered to meet me at the station. Yes, sir. We, uh, we just stopped in for a drink of water, Captain. Oh, water, huh? Who is this man? Is this Conover? No, sir. Conover is at the station waiting for you, sir. You! Go to the barouche outside and transfer my baggage to the staff car. Now get out! Don't be too hard on them. Well, our friends, the American business. Whoa, <laughs> Mademoiselle Cartier, this is a surprise. Well, shut my mouth. What'd you two blow in town? Clinton, Conover. I told you to transfer that baggage to the staff car at once. Yes, sir. Bon, officers' ladies are not supposed to speak to privates. Well, I can't help feeling sorry for them. They look like two whip boys. 
Whatever made them join the Legion? You did. I? Don't you remember? You suggested it to them. Well, of course I did, but... But I didn't think they'd take me seriously. What a pity I got them into such a mess. Don't pity them. Pity the Legion. If Captain Rillette had only known what we have in this car. <laughs> Rifles and ammunition for the faithful. Smuggled from under the noses of the French. <laughs> Allah be praised. I hope your ladies will like the sweet, Captain. It will do. Yes, thank you, Captain. Excuse, lady, please. Do you like it, Yvonne? It seems very comfortable. Much more luxury than I thought possible in city benefits. Shall I show you the rest of the rooms? Yes, please do, Henri. Is it this way? No, not that way. That's the connecting door to the next suite. This way. I, uh, I'm sorry I advised you so badly. Shh. I'm a soldier in disgrace. Don't be silly. I've been breaking rules all my life. Actually, you did me a favor. If I hadn't joined the Legion, I would never have met you again. Now you sound like a Frenchman. I didn't know Americans could say things so nicely. But I do wish you luck. Are you coming, Yvonne? Yes, dear. Minton? Yes, sir? Report yourself to Sergeant Grobner as being under arrest. Yes, sir. Boy, there's a raft of them leaving this time. Them guys can kiss themselves goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes, Pike. They got our name on this bill of fare. Yeah, take a look at it. Fresh meat for the Arabs. Say, what kind of a picnic is this? It's a replacement for the outpost at Boudinib. The refs wiped out the garrison there in a surprise attack. You guys will be under fire from the minute you enter them hills. I quit. Hey, come here, dope. Say, does this kind of thing happen very often? Every other week. If it isn't one outpost, it's another. Oh, I didn't know there was a war on. There isn't. But the rifts and Arabs don't know that. Somebody forgot to tell them. Oh, oh come on. Cigarette, <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That must be the punishment the captain promised us. No, oh, that's Grobner. He wants to get rid of us on the kind of Honey Evans. A big crowd. I'd like to take him for a ride. Gee, if we only had our rods. We'll have a couple of new ones tonight. Come on, let's go. Dad, look at Grover over there with our honey. A big chiseler. Come on, let's make it a real party. Hi, honey gal. How you doing, babe? I'm doing okay. Why, you men know you have no right here. These tables are for non-commissioned officers. Get back where you belong. He's been eating poison out of you again. <laughs> Don't be such an old meanie. You know, you can't keep this gal all to yourself. Get away from this table or I'm order you under arrest. If you're going to start a fight in here, you can count me out. Oh, don't go, honey. I want to talk to you. Sorry, it's time for my number. I'll be seeing you. Toodaloo. You know you're not permitted to sit with a non-commissioned officer. I'll have you thrown out of here. No, I wouldn't if I were you, Sergeant. <laughs> You've been drinking too much, Grove. Now look at that timer you've got on you. Do you realize what you are doing? Take it easy. It's all in fun. We're just playful, that's all. Are you tickly, Sergeant? Stop that! Stop that, do you hear me? Then be a good boy and listen. What do you want? You're sore because we've got a drag with honey. You fix it so we'd be sent to Boudinie. I'll fix it so you'll be sent to prison for what you are doing to me. Men have got ten years for lesser crimes than this. But we don't want to go to prison. We want to stay right here in Bella Bez. Sergeant, boss, look in your hat. What? In your hat. In your hat. Two one thousand franc notes. I see them. Do you think you can bribe a non-commissioned officer? Well, <laughs> at least we can try. This money is yours, as soon as our names come off that replacement list. We don't want to go on no shooting trips. We want soft jobs right here at the post. You fix it for us, and you get 1,000 francs a month for the entire term of our enlistment. Is it a deal? I promise nothing. And it's all set. Uh, swell. The drinks is on me. <laughs> Do you think I drink with filthy second-class privates? Stand up and come to attention when an uncommissioned officer is about to leave. 
<laughs> Soft jobs. <laughs> Soft jobs. Chambermaids to a stable full of nags. Clinton. Corporal. Mademoiselle Cartier is taking out Captain Roulette's horse. She wants you to go along as an escort. I suppose you ride? Uh, uh, oh, sure. Very well. Spruce up your uniform and get the horses ready. You can take this one. Yes, Corporal. Hey, you can't do that. You ain't never been on a horse in your life. Oh, I'll stick on somehow. Say, listen, for a chance to talk to that girl, I'd ride a rhinoceros. <laughs> Here you are. You're head chambermaid now. Water, 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 How many machine guns were sent with the detachment to Budenit? Ten, master. Ten less to be used at El Gazir. The sister of your enemy's wife has gone for a ride outside the wall. With an escort? No, one soldier. They rode out through Bab Hadid gate. Aha. Hassan. Yes, sir. Mulay, we have work to do. Come. No, no, you, you just let go of the reins. Oh. You haven't ridden very much, have you, Mr. Big Business Executive? No, as a matter of fact, this is my first offense. <laughs> but I'm willing to learn if I can go out with you again. Well, I'll see if we can arrange it. Why were you and Mr. Conover, your friend, running away from that man in Paris? Was he an American policeman? Oh, no, no, no. No, he was a... Uh, well, he was a former business associate. Oh. And we thought he was mad at us. But you had been breaking the laws in America, hadn't you? Well, yes. But it's a law that's since been repealed, and... I know that's rather a lame excuse. Well, it's no excuse at all. You were a criminal then, weren't you? Yes. It's like this, you see. It all started out as a good, clean fun and ended up as a rough house. Oh, I see. You, uh, you were looking for a place to repent in peace and quiet. Exactly. <laughs> and we found it. <laughs> yes, a fellow has to pay for his mistakes in this world, and we are paying for ours in the Foreign Legion. Uh-uh. Here comes trouble. Delegation from the gas house gang. There they are, Master. Yes, but they've seen us too soon. Anyway, we'll try. No, oh, I don't think they'd harm us. Uh, maybe not, but I'm not taking any chances as long as you're with me. I'll get your horse. Make that ace turn right into a king. Now what? What? Why don't they? Has Mademoiselle Cartier returned yet? No, Captain. Oh, that's strange. What happened? We were chased by Arabs, sir. Your horse bolted and they got him. We had to ride back double. I left Mademoiselle Cartier at the hotel, sir. Arabs got my horse right under the walls of Bellabis? Yes, sir. You were responsible for the safety of Mademoiselle Cartier. I know, sir. You were also responsible for my horse, which was stolen. Well, that wasn't my fault. Of course sir. it was. You, a legionnaire. You clumsy, worthless lout, you. You... I know, sir. I'm to report to Sergeant Grosvenor's being under arrest, sir. Corporal. Sir. Put this man back on the stable to tell you where he belongs. Yes, Captain. Rub that horse down with lemon. When you're through with that, Clean out all the stalls and Troop D stables. Uh, can I use a little intimate on myself, Corporal? Absolutely not. You should know better than that. Government property can't be wasted. Yeah, but Corporal... Oh. Well, it looks like you can't keep that supper date we made with Honey Evans for tonight. No, I guess we'll have to call it off. Call it off nothing? I'll throw her a party she'll never forget. Uh, give her my love. Sure. I'll even give her a kiss for you. Hey, hey, where's your manners? So what you do here? No legionnaire private is permitted in this hotel. Yeah, I know all about that. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Spike Conover. Giving us supper here tonight. Monsieur Conover has not come yet. Yeah, that's all right. I'll wait. I wonder what's keeping Henri. We'll be late for that dinner. 
I think I'll phone the post. I'm sorry, dear. I've been in the Commandant's office until just a few moments ago. Something very important. Now, Henri, don't tell me you've been ordered away again. Yes, dear, I can't help it. They're sending me to El Gazer first thing in the morning. If you think that I'm going to stay here alone... But you won't be alone, dear. You'll have Yvonne with you. I'm afraid I'll be a very poor substitute, Henri. You'll have to get permission to take us with you. To El Gazer? Impossible. Why, you double-cross and two-timer, you. That's a fine trick to play on me. I hire the room. I buy the flowers. I order the wine. I pay for the supper. I even go out and dig up a turkey. Oh, you should have left it dirty. And it isn't a turkey, it's a pheasant. All right, so it's a peasant. It's all right for me to round up the dame and send her here in a cab. Sneaking through back alleys and dodging MPs. While you, the fair-haired boy, slides in and cops all the gravy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you call me gravy. Hey, hey, take it easy, honey. Easy nothing. Did I come here to referee a scrap to eat my supper? If this is going to be a free-for-all, let's make it out. Good luck. That goes for me, too. Good heavens, what's going on in there? Now, darling, you must understand. Don't darling me. I insist that you take us with me. Oh, here you are, Miss Honey Evans. You have an appointment with me, and here you go to supper with these two regimental pets. Well, what of it? My time's my own, isn't it? Sure it is. And don't go getting poisoned off. Shut up, baboon face. Shut up yourself, you old walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Attention, you two good-for-nothings. You know you have no right to be in this hotel. What if I call the MP? Who are those people in there? I don't know, Captain. Now don't I... lie to me. Of course you know. Take your pass key and open that door at once. Uh, all right, Captain. They can't be officers. Excuse me. I will. I will open it for you. You won't call anybody. We are paying you a thousand francs a month to lay off us, and this comes under the head of laying off. Grobner. Yes, Captain? I was... I was just about to place Private Linton and Carnival under arrest. I'll attend to that. What's this I hear about a thousand francs a month? Have you been accepting bribes from these men? Captain... Answer me! Yes, Captain. I might have expected they'd attempt to corrupt the morale of the non-commissioned officers. But I never dreamed they'd succeed with you. You will pay every franc of that money into the Widows and Orphans Fund of the Legion. I need you in El Gazer. But when we return from there, I shall recommend that you be reduced to the ranks. Yes, Captain. And as for you two men, you're a disgrace to the uniform you wear. And prison would be wasted on such as you. But service in the field may make soldiers of you, though I doubt it. I am taking a detachment on active duty in the morning. And you'll go with me. Two big businessmen who joined our legion for a rest. You'll find anything but that in El Gazer. Hander, Frank. Fifty. A hander. Fifty. No, 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 a hander. Any moment, you'll close the blows. Mademoiselle Cartier. Can I speak to you alone, please? Can you think of anything worth saying? Well, about that, uh, you know, that business at the hotel at Belle Abyss. I was there because... I my... haven't the slightest interest in knowing why you were there or what you were doing. Now, will you excuse me? Sure. Are you coming, Louise? Yes, sir. Please, your ma chef. Please, make a general's car is coming, sir. Thank you. General. Well, hello, Rilette. You're looking very well indeed. Uh, you've met my wife, Madame Everard? Of course. My wife and her sister are here, and they'll be very pleased to entertain you. Thank you very much. We are very proud to welcome you to El Gazer, General. Well, that's fine, but don't let's make a ceremony of it. You and I know what a messy place El Gazer is. I know, but Pierre, it's so colorful. Oh, yes. I have no doubt we'll find a bit of color in Hades, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rilette. Call your ladies, and we'll all ride up to the barracks together. Thank you, General. Say, what's eating you? Must be something in the air of this place. That tastes like Pirelli stuff before it was cut. Yeah, I bet it doesn't pack half the wall if this letter does. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> the gun. Yeah. 
Your bank accounts have been seized, and your safe deposit boxes have been attached. That dirty crooks. Yeah. If we ever get back to New York, we won't have a dime. Women and the Inspector General's wife. With those women as our hostages, we could demand the evacuation of all El Gazir. Pass the word among the faithful. When I fall at the feet of the General's wife, have them surround the women and carry them off. Why are they following us? Native curiosity. We're, 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 we're infidels. <laughs> it's all right. The, the town's well policed. Come on. Ah. Ah, for this time, eh? Ah, la blessed the merciful town. You go out there and tell that mob to go away from here. Yes, ma'am. I'll go out and tell those nasty people to go right home. Come on, Spike. <laughs> Two men fall in behind. About! Face! Order! Hunt! Forward! Hunt! We'll probably get a military medal for this. Privates Linton and Conover. From the testimony of the headmen of the village and the corporal in command of the patrol, it has been proved that you are both found in a native quarter strictly forbidden to legionnaires, that your presence there endangered the peace of the town, that you were carrying concealed weapons in violation of a stringent regulation that during the disturbance one of you struck a native holy man. Your sergeant major also testifies that since your enlistment you have been a source of constant irritation to your superior officers. It's the decision of this court that you serve six months at hard labor in the disciplinary camp under the command of adjutant Cartellini. So you're tired, eh? You don't want to work anymore today. I suppose you'd rather have a siesta. Is that it? No, Rajan Cartellini. I can't stand up anymore. I'm sick. I'm done. You're lazy. Get back to work. I can't. I can't. I'll bring that devil in a minute. Take it easy. Kenya. You'll kill the kid if he keeps that. I wouldn't be the first man he's killed. Why didn't someone report Catalini? Wouldn't they listen? Sure they'd listen. Last minute trying to just bear it right over that hill. What about the guards? Senegalese? They're scared of death of them. They won't talk. They think he's got the evil eye. So if this bunch had any backbone, they'd rush the guards. That's and... just right. Somebody to get a machine gun before they do. 
a leader. I know what'll limber you up. The punishment. No. No. Do you mean to tell me they stand for that sort of thing in the Legion? No. I've never heard of it in any other camp. But they don't know about Catalini. He's Qatar. What do you mean, Qatar? He has a beetle in his brain. Crazy from the sun. But he acts smart enough when an officer comes around to inspect the camp. See those tunnels through that gorge? That's an example of the work the men in the labor camps are doing. Oh, you wanted some water. I'm afraid you'll find this rather warm. But that's one of the penalties you'll have to pay for insisting on making this trip through the desert. A disciplinary camp is no place for women. Well, that's the least we could do for those men after what they did for us. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for allowing the general to sentence them to the labor camp. The Legion is founded on discipline. But what happened wasn't their fault. You seem to have forgotten they practically saved our lives. I did not forget. I did my best to get them off with a lighter sentence. They've broken every regulation since they enlisted in the regiment. But you must do what you can for them, Henri. I intend to, my dear. What sort of a place is that camp? Not a very pleasant one. Adjutant Cardellini is a strange fellow. Sometimes I wonder if his mind isn't affected. Relate on his ladies. They are following the tie to the prison camp. Yes, master. Kent, get two men. Take him to the camp and throw some water on him. Water won't do him any good. You killed him. What do you mean, I killed him? Oh, you never gave him a chance. He was half dead when you ordered him back to work. Say, you guys, are you going to stand for this? A captain! Bowen! to give you an example of what mutineers may expect from me. You've never seen a man staked out, have you? The sun bores through his eyes till it seems his brain's on fire. Before I'm through with you, you're going to pray for death a thousand times. Take him out! Murdering any more of us, and that's what you wanted, isn't it? 
We don't to listen to our side of the story. If he doesn't, me and my buddy will take the rap for it. There's no use killing innocent people. Ah, you're crazy. We can't leave any witnesses alive. If we do, they'll sweat the blood out of us in some other prison camp. Come on, boys. Let's get it. Let's finish them all. <laughs> Ah, 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 El Gazir is answering. They get released to us by morning. Well, if we're still here by morning. Look out! Here it comes! Duck! Safe, sir? Yeah, for the moment. Why don't the slobs come and get it over with? We've got one full belt of ammunition left. Save it. We'll need it. A nitroglycerin bomb. An explosive of tremendous force. The slightest concussion will blast them all to Shatan. I can place it in their camp, Master. No, you might fail. I'll do this myself. At the sound of the explosion, you attack in force. If Catalini was insane, why didn't you report it at inspection? Only one man had nerve enough to do that. He paid for it with his life. Are you sure it was an Arab bullet that got Catalini? Yes, sir. He was hit during the first attack. I saw him fall. It's better that way. No more water in the, the wounded. What? Well, there was a whole tank of it. Oh, I know, I know, but it's empty now. Well, I'll see about that. Okay, hang on to that, you may need it. If we do get out of this, are you going to charge the boys with mutiny? Why shouldn't I? Well, if you do, I think you're as cruel and mad as Cotlini himself. What's the matter? Nasty spike? I'm fine enough. Look. Pull it home. Yeah. They've been concentrating their fire all around it. There's plenty of wine bottles in Catalini's tent, but they're all empty. No wonder the guy was nuts. There's a little bit left in here, but I was... I was saving it for the girls. Say, a lot of dead Arabs lying around. They've all got canteens. How about making a collection? Okay. Hope we don't stop a couple of slugs ourselves.
water for the others. I may as well finish the wine in this bottle, huh? in that guy's canteen. That was a bomb and meant for us. Why, that's dirty. Come along, let's take him back to camp. <laughs> Sorry we came here too late to help you, Captain. You arrived in time to clean up the mess. Return the prisoners to El Gazer under guard. For valorous conduct under fire, I shall recommend that their sentences be revoked. You mean you're going to forget about the mutiny? Mutiny? What mutiny? Excuse me, sir, I think the heat's got him. For meritorious service in capturing Sheikh Abdel Ben Abu, I shall recommend that Privates Linton and Conover be recommended motion to the rank of corporal. Dismiss your company. Company? Yes. Henri will surely get a staff appointment now. Oh, I think we can thank you for that. Well, I guess this is goodbye. No, it's just au revoir. Mm -hmm. Say, how would a Frenchman say that? Well, he'd, uh, he'd kiss my hand. That's right. And how would an American say it? Oh, lady, that's right up my street. <laughs> Private Lincoln, sir. What are you doing? Receiving my decoration, sir. And thank you very much. 